We are going to prove it in, for a very general family of random matrices. So we assume that the entries of a matrix are independent with uh, the only possible exception that the entry AIJ may depend on AJI. And this would uh, include in our class fully independent ensembles like Ginebra, uh, as well as Hermitians, Q Hermitian, and other ensembles. And the second assumption, we'll assume that the real parts of entries are random, the imaginary parts are deterministic. And although this sounds not completely natural, this is also intended to include two most natural classes. One is real matrices, where the imaginary part is just zero. And another is uh, complex matrices with uh, imaginary part independent of the real part. In that case, we would condition on the imaginary part. OK. So what we are striving to establish is the delocalization property, namely that any I unit eigenvector, uh, for any unit eigenvector and for any set of coordinates of size epsilon n, the L2 norm falling on these coordinates is polynomial in epsilon. The power 6 we get here is not optimal by any means, but we want to get a polynomial dependence. And then we prove that we will prove that if the entries have a uniformly bounded density, then this delocalization event is likely namely the probability of failure is exponential in epsilon n, plus the additional term which is small if uh, the entries ha have, this, uh, for example, a bounded for a fourth moment. And this can be established up to eight the coordinates. Uh, so this is what we are going to prove, but uh, there is a much more general analog of this re result, namely the same statement is true without almost any assumption on random uh, entries, namely if we assume that the entries are not deterministic, they're not contained in, the small, uh, in small disks, then the same assumption, uh, the, the same result would be true that the localization will be likely. Uh, this is a, a much more complicated uh, result, so I would not talk much about it, and we'll, we'll dis, uh, discuss the previous one. But the approach to both results is the same. First of all, we want to get rid of uh, the notion of eigenvector and eigenvalue. So instead of uh, uh, eigenvalue, which is random, we can consider any deterministic complex number. And also, we can consider any set of cardinality epsilon n. And if we manage to prove that the minimal singular value of the matrix A minus lambda i reduced to the complement of this set uh, is uh, smaller than delta square root of n with small probability, then the localization event has probability 1 minus this p0 times a harmless coefficient and times the coefficient n choose epsilon n which causes trouble because this is super exponential. And the first time we, uh, we tried uh, to attack this problem with uh, epsilon net argument, which resulted in a complete failure because in any model we found an obstacle which, is, uh, which we couldn't pass, uh, being that a dependence between the entries being the 
entropy cost, which is too high, or the super exponential bound. So what can we do if we don't know how to solve the problem? Uh, the usual approach uh, would be to relax the problem, to solve something easier, and then at least we'll get partially happy. So instead of the minimal singular value, let's bound the average singular value. Now, which kind of average should we choose? An arithmetic mean would be immediate, but this is not too interesting, because if we take the arithmetic mean of the singular values, the most contribution comes from the largest singular values, so we don't feel the small ones. Geometric mean is useless by the same reason. Harmonic means sounds more exciting because uh, harmonic means puts the maximal weight on the smallest singular values, but we don't know how to handle harmonic means. Fortunately, there is a mean which we know how to handle, and this is second order harmonic, and this is due to the uh, negative second moment identity. So what is this? Uh, this uh, identity already arised in the talks of Terry Tower, and uh, it was proving it was one of the questions uh, during the problem session of Tau. So let me remind you what it is. Suppose that I have a matrix B, and in our case, B will be A minus lambda reduced to this set IC. So this will be n times 1 minus epsilon n matrix. And then we have a linear algebra identity, which is the sum j from 1 to 1 minus epsilon n s j of B, where S, J are singular values of B to the negative second power equals the sum J from 1 to 1 minus epsilon N of the distances between B, J, and H, J to the negative second power. And let me say what this bj and hj mean. Uh, bj will be the, so bj will be the columns of the matrix B and, sorry, here, one minus epsilon n and H, J, will be the linear span of all except J's uh, column. Uh, this, is, uh, this identity is uh, very easy to establish. This is just a way of writing the Hilbert-Schmidt norm of the matrix B inverse acting from its image. You can write the Hilbert-Schmidt norm in two ways. One would be the sum of the squares of the singular values, which would give the left-hand side, and another the sum 
of the squared norms of the columns, and this would yield the right-hand side. OK, so now we have these distances, the distance between one column and the span of the rest. And I can write each distance as the Euclidean norm of the projection P J H oh, sorry of B J where P J is the orthogonal projection with a kernel the subspace hj. So we want uh, to, uh, to estimate the negative square of the distance of the norm of the projection which means that we want to, uh, to establish a small ball probability for the norm of the projection. And let's look at this vector bj. This is a column of the matrix, and the entries of the column are independent, and they have a bounded density. This is precisely what we prepared last time. If uh, uh, we have a vector with, uh, whose coordinates are independent and have a, bound, a uniformly bounded density, then for any orthogonal projection of rank D, the density will be bounded by the density of the coordinates to the power D, like for the coordinate projection. And uh, we are going to use this in an equivalent form. We will consider the Levy concentration function of the projection, and uh, which is the supremum of the probabilities of small balls, the balls of radius d squared root d. And uh, this Levy concentration function is bounded by a power of d. OK. And one important feature of this estimate is when you translate the densities into the small ball probabilities, you gain square root of d, which comes from the volume of the Euclidean ball. So it seems that we are ready. We have to. Want bound the probability that the norm of pj b j this projection on the linear span of other columns is less than t square root of the uh, dimension and since the kernel has dimension uh, 1 minus epsilon n minus 1. So the dimension of the image will be uh, epsilon n minus 1. And I'll be a little inaccurate here. I'll drop this minus 1 just not to carry it over. This will be harmless uh, if epsilon n is greater than, say, 8. We can put the constant 1 half in front. So this is less or equal than whatever we are supposed to get. Uh, this is a, indeed how we, we will proceed. But uh, the direct application 
Uh, the previous theorem doesn't work. Let's see why. First, uh, this pertains to deterministic projection. And the projection Pj is random. It's a projection on the uh, linear span of other columns. And these two are dependent because uh, the entries of the matrix are not independent. But this dependence is very easy to get rid of. Uh, let's draw the matrix. This was our A minus lambda. So I took a set I of cardinality epsilon, uh, epsilon N, and threw it away. I considered only uh, columns belonging to uh, the complement of I. Here is the diagonal. OK, then I take a column B, uh, the jth column. This is B. J, and look at the span of the others. And our dependence condition is set up in such a way that only the entries symmetric with respect to the diagonal can depend on each other. So the only entries dependent on this column will be in the J throw. And let's throw the J throw away. So I, can, I will consider the vectors B, J prime in C and minus 1. These are the columns of the matrix with the jth row erased. And then if I erase the jth row both from the col uh, column J and from all other columns, I would be able to write that the distance between B, J, and H, J is greater or equal than the distance between B, J prime and H, J prime. And now we are in a good shape because uh, the column B, J prime, the vector B, J prime now is independent of the other vectors on which I span H, J. So can we use this result now? There is another caveat. We proved this result over R, and our vectors are complex. This is not a big deal. We can uh, consider, say, B, J will be X, J plus I, Y, J, and we can consider a real realization of this vector, say, B, J, tilde, which is vector, uh, the vector x, j, y, j, which is an r to n minus 1. So now we have real vectors the same way we will create a real subspace h, j, tilde, and and it doesn't uh, go through because uh, the vectors x, j are random. The vectors y, j are deterministic. OK, it's easy to help. Let's erase this, these vectors y, j. We are going to project out the imaginary coordinates. But it doesn't work either because if I consider the, the 
the real analog of Hj, H, sorry, it's uh, not Bj, Bj prime and Hj prime tilde, this independent version, I'll have that this is uh, 2, 1 minus epsilon n minus 2. Okay, epsilon is small. This is more or less 2n. If I project uh, out the imaginary coordinates, I'll have a projection whose uh, range is n minus 1 dimensional. I project the space of the dimension uh, almost to n on the n dimensional subspace, and I can uh, possibly get the whole subspace. So I would not be able to, uh, to prove any small ball estimate for the projection. However, the, uh, this, the, uh, this is not uh, too serious of a problem. We can apply an easy symmetrization trick uh, to be able to use this theorem. So let's see how, uh, how can we do it. We are going to operate on the level of Levy concentration functions. So I'm going to consider the small ball probability of the norm of P, uh, Pj prime, where the kernel of Pj prime is Hj prime. Uh, Bj prime, which is xj plus i y j minus any point z, any complex point z in the respective uh, space c to uh, c sorry n minus one less or equal than t square root of epsilon n. Okay, the projection is linear. This is a deterministic vector, so I can write it as uh, the probability that the norm of p j prime x j minus u less or equal than t square root of epsilon n, where I hide uh, under u this deterministic projection and this deterministic point z. Okay, now let's square it. And instead of squaring it, I'll multiply it by the same thing. So that's the projection of uh, norm P prime J x j minus u less or equal than t square root epsilon n. But uh, here I can replace this x j by its independent copy, say x j hat. Okay, what, uh, what else can I do? Uh, the space a j prime is the complex space. It's invariant under multiplication by complex numbers. So if I multiply x j by i, I can pull this i out. And I also multiply, of course, uh, this u by i. And then now this is less or equal than the probability that by triangle inequality, 
the norm pj prime of x j plus i oh, or minus i plus i x j hat minus u minus plus i u less or equal than 2 t square root of epsilon n. And let's look at this vector. This is a vector with independent, uh, if I write it in real form, I'll get get a vector, say, x, j tilde, which is x, j, x, j hat. This is a vector with independent coordinates. And all these coordinates have uniformly bounded density. So. I can operate now in the space, instead of the space C n minus 1, in the space R 2 n minus 1. And then I can finally apply the bound for the Levy concentration function. And I have that this is less or equal than ct to the power real dimension of uh, the image of pj. The complex image of pj had dimension epsilon n. The real dimension will be thus 2 epsilon n. That uh, seems strange that we've got here, so our small ball probability is better than we would expected, but actually this two would disappear in a second because uh, we had originally the squared probability. So let's summarize what we proved. Let's formulate it as a proposition. So the the probability that the distance between the space, uh, between the vector bj, the original vector, and the original space hj is less or equal than t square root epsilon n is bounded by t to the power 2 epsilon n. And this is the reason why the bounded density case is uncomparably easier than the general case. We, have, we established this, as, uh, this small ball probability bound without any information about the space Hj. Uh, oh, sorry, epsilon, thank you. We, take the, we took the square root. So we, uh, we do not know anything about Hj, and this bound is uniform over all positions of such spaces. This is impossible if the entries are discrete. Then the small ball probability <laughs> bound depends on the arithmetic structure of the space Hj, and determining the arithmetic structure and showing that a typical realization of Hj uh, doesn't have any arithmetic structure uh, takes 80% of the work in the proof of the general result. Fortunately, we will not 
touch it at all. So we have now this, and if I denote yj, uh, by yj what appears in the right-hand side of this inequality, so the distance to the negative square between b, j, and h, j, then I can conclude that for any, say, tau positive, the probability that y j is greater is greater than to over epsilon n is less or equal than c over to to the power epsilon n over 2. Here I used uh, to being t to the negative 2. OK, so we have the tail probability for one of yj's. Of course, uh, if we have the tail probability for one variable, we want to establish the tail probability for the sum. And the problem is that, of course, yj are not independent. Yet, here we can use some basic functional analysis to get this tail probability. First, let's write this inequality in a different language. If I, uh, I have a random variable y, I can define its weak p norm as the supremum over to positive of to to the negative 1, the probability that y, uh, say absolute value of y is greater than to, to the power 1 over p. Uh, this is a standard uh, notion in functional analysis, in harmonic analysis, this is the weak LP norm. And in this language, we can say that the weak LP norm of yj uh, is less or equal than a constant over epsilon n for p being epsilon n over 2. Good. And then, theoretically, we can use the triangle.